I hope your Thursday is a good one today. We're looking together at Luke chapter 14, verse 25 to 32. This passage opens with an incredibly tough statement. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, his wife and children, his brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. It is also recorded that large crowds were traveling with Jesus at the time he said this. I would not be surprised if they began to thin out a bit after he said it. Some of those following him were possibly going along as spectators, hoping to marvel at the miracles, receive some healing, or even get a free bread and fish lunch. Others, as we know from passages in the Gospels, were hoping he was going to lead a successful campaign against the hated Roman rulers. It looks like Jesus was making the cost of discipleship clear. It costs everything you have, maybe even your life. Jeff and I belong to an organisation called Open Doors and Open Doors works with the persecuted church, Christians who live in countries that are hostile to Christianity, sometimes to the extent that any kind of expression of their faith from possessing a Bible to worshipping worshiping in a church, are forbidden and punishable by imprisonment or even death. The following is taken from the Open Doors work website and is about North Korea, the country with the worst persecution record. It's difficult to overstate the reach of the North Korean authorities and the obedience and leader worship they demand. Police raids to identify and arrest, arrest citizens with deviating thoughts have increased and the whole country is deliberately controlled through an atmosphere of intense fear. And yet, despite all this, the church in North Korea is not only surviving, but growing. Clearly, Christians in North Korea know the cost. 50 to 70,000 of them are currently imprisoned in terrible labour camps and many will die there. We in the considerably more tolerant United Kingdom find it hard to imagine these kinds of conditions. Maybe through the lockdown we've got an idea of how it feels not to be able to engage in worship with others, but to risk imprisonment or a labour camp for just owning a Bible? As always, when I read about the persecuted church, I have to consider the possibility that maybe we don't face opposition and persecution because we're not really radical enough in our faith. How do we compare with the early church as described in Acts? Would I be prepared to die for being a Christian? Verse 27 says this, Anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. I wonder if any of his disciples remembered him saying this when they saw Jesus carrying his own cross on the way to Calvary. In 1969, a Baptist priest, preacher in the USA called Arthur Blessed took this passage seriously. He began to walk round his local area carrying a wooden cross to provide an opening to spread the gospel. It's hard to ignore a man carrying a large cross around. Arthur has to date walked for 43,000 miles through 324 nations with his cross. I don't believe Jesus asked us all to carry a real cross like Arthur, but I wonder what carrying your cross and following Jesus means to you. Maybe something to ponder on today. See you tomorrow.